Now that we have set up the Ekman velocity and Ekman transports, uh, we can see uh, how the interior ocean responds to this. So I hope you're getting the idea. There is a friction layer on top which is being forced by the winds and creating vertical motion that's going to put water into the interior and the interior ocean is going to respond to that which is what uh, we will call wind-driven circulation. Of course there is directly friction-driven currents at the surface as well but you can see that you can imagine that once you get away from that frictional layer we're going to get back into thinking about uh, geostrophy and other things. Okay? We have seen this before, uh, just to see it again. We, now that we have an idea of um, the magnitude of typical Ekman pumping, Ekman suction uh, velocities, uh, how long would it take? So here is a depth of about uh, 400 meters. So we, are, uh, we have argued before that uh, there is a circulation of this type in the ocean where upwelling brings the water to the surface, there is Ekman divergence, then there is uh, Ekman pumping and this water has to come back. So you want to know how long it takes for uh, the water to uh, subduct to 400 meters. Subduction is a more technical term so I want to be careful. Nonetheless, how long does uh, it take to uh, pump the water down to 400 meter. Obviously you have 30 meter per year so you do your calculation you're going to end up with more than a decade. So you can imagine now compared to the atmosphere where things were just zipping along ocean is moving like molasses very slowly uh, once you get away from the surface. Everything is slow and there is this huge um, difference in magnitude of uh, order of magnitude of vertical motions versus horizontal motions. It's not so different than the atmosphere. The atmosphere uh, does have uh, order 25 meter per second vertical motion and similar magnitudes in the horizontal but there are other uh, ways to think about it. For example in the subtropical highs the air was coming down very slowly because there was adiabatic compression creating warming and buoyancy and radiation loss, radiant cooling, radiation cooling, radiative cooling was creating uh, it to sink and that sinking happens uh, much more slowly and so on. Just try to imagine all the physics. Okay, so response of the interior to Ekman pumping. Let's write the interior balance. Again, uh, s s sticking with our um, incompressible fluid, uh, low Rossby number, uh, writing our non-divergence uh, relation. We will now write geostrophic divergence in the horizontal. We are now away from uh, the frictional layer. Uh, ddx of uh, minus 1 over rho ref f dp dy, that's our geostrophy, d dy of 1 over rho ref uh, f dp dx and we're going to introduce something here that turns out to be very important for ocean circulation. Okay, what is it? Basically uh, d dx uh, of f is zero F doesn't vary in the longitudinal direction, but F varies in the latitudinal direction, right? What is the latitudinal direction uh, variation? DF dy is called beta. It's called the beta effect. So if you solve this equation and cancel out the terms, you're going to end up with d dy of 1 over rho ref f giving you um, obviously the dp dx dy and dp dx dy terms cancel because you have minus and plus but if f is not constant because we are now going on the scale of the gyres we've been doing f as if it's constant so far suddenly we are saying we are going to a scale where f is not constant anymore so that d d f d y is going to give us beta so if you solve this equation and cancel the appropriate terms which include u then you're going to end up with minus beta or f v g okay so divergence horizontal divergence of geostrophic currents below the surface is minus beta or f 
VG. This is the magical term that's going to save us. So remember the Y in the latitudinal direction is just radiation, the radius of the Earth times d phi because cosine uh, phi is um, remember the a cosine phi we can write it as a d phi for small uh, change in latitude beta is df dy because f is only a function of y we can write it as df dy instead of the partial uh, that's 1 over a df dy uh, df d phi but because we are replacing dy with a d phi that is going to give us 2 omega over a cosine phi f was what? f was uh, omega sine phi 2 omega sine phi so all we did was here replace uh, df d phi with 2 omega cosine phi by taking the derivative of uh, f in terms of its uh, full form 2 omega sine phi okay that was our coordinate system where we had looked at the Coriolis effect we had done the local projection using this I don't know why I'm going through it but nonetheless we translated the omega to the local XYZ and we used the coordinate uh, of the latitude and we uh, showed that the uh, meridional component and the zonal components uh, are not important only the vertical component is important that's the omega sine phi that gave us omega as zero omega cosine phi omega sine phi and so on and so forth I'm not going to go through that again omega cross u became zero omega cosine phi omega sine phi cross uvw and that was our uh, three components and we said oh, W component is really small so we end up with just um, and the the vertical component is along gravity so we don't care about it it's too small compared to gravity so we only ended up with the meridional and zonal components so you can revise that by going back to the appropriate podcast nonetheless on planetary scales f is not a constant and that's what gave us df dy of um, beta so to recap the divergence of u geostrophy is minus beta over f v g okay this has consequences so the uh, geostrophic flow is not uh, divergent on is not non-divergent on planetary scales okay so for the Ekman layer we had written it in terms of the ageostrophic divergence balancing the Ekman pumping but now for the interior flow we are going to uh, take the Ekman pumping that's putting fluid into the interior and we're going to write uh, divergence of geostrophy plus d omega dz equals zero so the horizontal uh, divergence this was our uh, inviscid barotropic fluid uh, frictionless and so on where we said geostrophic flow is non-divergent in you know this is a full vector uvw right now we are saying on planetary scale that's not true anymore so horizontal divergence plus dw dz has to be zero that gave us beta vg equals f dw dz because we derived this to be minus beta over uh, f that's e okay that's our expression minus beta or f vg is the horizontal divergence of the geostrophic flow we put that into this equation and we get beta vg equals f dw dz okay this equation basically you can write it as uh, Ekman velocity divided by h which is the vertical scale of the thermocline delta L over h is smaller than so we basically made an assumption that the uh, geostrophic flow is uh, balanced by this Ekman pumping term which involves some scale arguments that the 
divergence of the ageostrophic flow is equal to W Ekman or delta, which we had done in 10.6, right, when we balanced ageostrophic flow to the Ekman uh, wind stress forcing and geostrophic flow to pressure gradient, right? So all this means is that the Ekman layer depth has to be much smaller than the total water column height, which is almost always true, except when you go into very shallow seas and so on. But when we are talking about the open ocean, Ekman layer is always much smaller than the entire ocean. In that case, we get beta Vg equals F D uh, W D Z. This is what tells us where the amplification is coming from. Very, very small Ws are amplified by beta over F and giving us Vg. So this is 32 meter per year times uh, spatial scale is giving us centimeter per second horizontal. Vertical scale is giving us centimeter per second horizontal scale. That's the main story. Okay? So the variation of beta or variation of f in the meridional direction provides an amplification to the very small vertical motions and produces much more amplified horizontal motions. Go through the equations, develop a, a physical sense for it, but we will look at it in different ways uh, in the coming podcasts. Okay? It's fairly simple stuff, but just look at the equations as many times as you have to and make sure you understood it. Beta effect is very important for the ocean. That's the main message.